Hello, my friend. I'm glad to welcome you here. This time I propose to talk about the phenomenon that determines our ability to success and self-realization the way of thinking. In her book Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, How to Tap into Your Potential, Carol S. Dweck offers us a new perspective on how our mindset affects our potential and achievement. Let's listen together to what principles and approaches of the new psychology of success can help us become more productive self-confident and effective in achieving our goals. Mindset The new psychology of success How we can learn to fulfill our potential by Carol S. Dweck Introduction Carol Dweck, one of the world's leading experts in the field of social and personality psychology, has made a simple but profoundly important discovery about the power and importance of mindset through years of research. In her talented book, she uses real-life examples to show how success at work, at school, in sports, and in personal relationships depends on what we think about our talents and abilities. If you believe that your abilities are given to you from birth and do not change throughout your life, then you have a frozen way of thinking that forces you to constantly prove to yourself and others your worth, your intelligence and strength of character. Each situation is assessed by such people from the standpoint of success or failure, winning or losing. The other half of humanity has a mobile way of thinking, which proceeds from the fact that a person is constantly developing, and his initial characteristics change thanks to efforts, the acquisition of new experience, and the help of others. The author is convinced that only a mobile way of thinking allows you to achieve true success in any area of life. Dweck explains to readers how to move from a fixed mindset to a fluid mindset and how to use a fluid mindset to raise talented children, coach successful athletes, run a competitive organization, and be happy in your personal life. The book is written in an easy, accessible, engaging manner and contains many interesting facts from the lives of celebrities. It will be of interest to everyone who wants to grow above themselves, acquire new knowledge and experience, achieve success in any endeavor, and cope with failures, feel confident and happy. How does a frozen way of thinking differ from a moving way of thinking? From time immemorial, Philosophers have argued about whether human personality traits are innate and unchangeable throughout life, or whether they constantly change and develop. Research carried out by the author over 30 years has shown how the answer to this question affects the daily life of each person. Believing that your characteristics are carved in stone indicates that you have a predominant, frozen way of thinking which forces you to constantly assert yourself and prove to yourself and others that you are an intelligent and worthy member of society. Each situation is assessed by such a person from the perspective of, will I succeed or fail? Will I appear smart or stupid? Will I be accepted or rejected? Will I feel like a winner or a loser? People with an agile mindset believe that personality traits are only the starting point and they can and should be developed by investing effort and relying on the help of others. This does not mean that people with an agile mindset believe that anyone can become Einstein or Beethoven, but they do believe that it is impossible to know one's potential in advance and to predict what glorious achievements years of hard work may lead to. Interestingly, Experts did not see a bright future for either Marcel Proust, Elvis Presley, or Charles Darwin. People with an agile mindset understand that it takes time to realize a person's full potential. For example, NASA, when reviewing applications for astronauts, rejected those whose resumes reflected a history of one success and selected those candidates who showed the ability to overcome serious career setbacks. One of the researchers cited by Dweck studied the stories of 120 prominent musicians, athletes, and scientists. 
Most of them did not show any signs of future achievements in childhood, and only their interest, hard work, dedication, and support from others brought them to the pinnacle of success. People with an agile mindset feel best when they challenge themselves and overcome challenges. People with a frozen mindset thrive when everything is under their control. If they suddenly stop feeling smart and talented, then they immediately lose interest. A person with a frozen way of thinking always needs to feel like perfection. For people with a moving way of thinking, the process of learning new things, overcoming difficulties, and moving forward is important. Why is it so important for a person with a frozen way of thinking to be impeccable right now? Because, from his point of view, one exam, one grade measures his personality and abilities once and for all. Believing that their characteristics are unchangeable, people often find themselves in situations where they are judged negatively, and their frozen way of thinking makes it impossible to cope with failure. If you believe that a person is constantly developing, then failures do not turn him into a loser, but are the next step for development. People with a frozen way of thinking are convinced that once you have talent or abilities, then it is no longer worth making efforts to develop them. Effort is for those who lack ability. From the point of view of a person with an agile mind, effort is admirable. It turns on your abilities and turns them into achievements. A fluid mindset allows people to value what they do, regardless of the outcome. Many people with a mobile mindset reach the heights of success, especially without striving for it, but simply doing what they love. John McEnroe, world number one tennis racket for four years, had a frozen way of thinking. He believed that athletic talent determines everything, and if you are successful, then you are better than other people. But Michael Jordan, the great basketball player with a moving way of thinking, claimed that he was the same as all other mortals and achieved success as a result of incredible training. Of course, failure is always painful, but it does not define your personality. This is just a problem that needs to be dealt with and a useful lesson can be learned from. People with a frozen mindset Instead of working to overcome failure, work on their self-esteem, trying to raise it, comparing themselves to those who are even worse. Another way to correct the self-esteem of people with a frozen way of thinking is to find excuses for their failure or shift the blame to others. The same McEnroe explained his losses by saying that it was either too hot or too cold, or he was undertrained or overtrained. You can only learn from mistakes when you admit them. The author observed high school students who had poor grades. Students with a frozen way of thinking explained their poor performance by saying that they were stupid, that they had a teacher with a biased attitude, etc. Children with a moving mentality also experienced difficulties with their studies, but their reaction was that to study harder. Students with a frozen mindset stated that their main goal in school was to learn acceptably with minimal effort. It is interesting that students with a frozen way of thinking tend to memorize the material when preparing for a test, while students with a moving mind try to understand the topic and understand their mistakes. If every person has the potential to grow, how can we give them the confidence they need to achieve results? At the end of the test, one group of students was praised, saying that they were capable, smart people, and another group was praised, saying that the guys did a great job. Then it turned out that the capable, smart people did not want to complete a more difficult task, afraid that they would not be able to cope with it, and everyone would see that they were not so smart. Students who were praised for their effort took on the challenge with gusto. For them, possible failure only meant that they had to try harder or change their solution strategy. They didn't think that failure somehow reflected their level of intelligence. If you have a frozen way of thinking, then you suffer more than others from stereotypes, both positive and negative. 
When everyone considers you a mathematical genius, you are afraid of making a mistake and losing this honorary title. If you are given a negative label, such as that women are not capable of doing math and science, then deep down you believe that this is probably true. People with a mobile mindset do not believe in the constancy of their characteristics, and therefore, if they lag behind others in some way, they will simply try to catch up. People who fall under the influence of a stereotype with a frozen mentality often feel that they don't fit in with a particular environment. A mobile way of thinking allows a person to discern the essence of prejudice and confidently resist it. The Mindset of a Champion The author defends the point of view that for athletes, the way of thinking is more important than physical data and talent. Interestingly, Michael Jordan was not immediately accepted into the university basketball team. He was incredibly worried and trained much more than others. And even after he became a sports legend, his grueling workouts continued to amaze basketball fans. Michael Jordan himself says that toughness of mind and heart is much more important than physical advantages. We tend to think of sports champions as superheroes from birth. Having studied the life stories of many American sports stars, the author came to the conclusion that they were ordinary people who did not think about themselves at all, that they were born to win. They trained a lot and hard, learned not to lose concentration in stressful situations and overcome themselves at the right moment. For athletes with an agile mindset, success lies in the ability to give it their all, learning new skills and improving existing ones, they enjoy the process as much as the result. They don't suffer from failure if they know they did their best and learn lessons for the future. Athletes with a frozen mindset view success as a demonstration of their own superiority. They hope that talent will lead them to victory, and if it doesn't work out, then others or circumstances are to blame. Such athletes do not know how to accept responsibility for their actions. In team sports, athletes with a fixed mindset also want to be superstars, not just members of the team. A star can help win a game, but it is only through the efforts of the entire team that championships are won. Only those with an agile mindset, the key tools of which are internal motivation, self-improvement, and responsibility, become great athletes. The Mindset of a Business Leader Company directors are regularly faced with the need to make a choice. Should he admit his shortcomings and overcome them? Or is it better to create an atmosphere in which he does not and cannot have any shortcomings? Should you choose a short-term company growth strategy that will quickly increase stock value and make the CEO look like a hero in the eyes of Wall Street? Or should you lay the foundations for the company's long-term health and growth at the risk of losing favor with Wall Street? Consultants from McKinsey & Co. claim that only talents can lead a company to success. Following their advice, Enron hired graduates from prestigious universities, paid them big money, and incentivized all employees to act with talent. In other words, Enron was dominated by a fixed mindset, which, as we already know, prevents people from admitting their mistakes and correcting them. As Malcolm Gladwell notes, in an atmosphere of the cult of natural talent, a person is afraid of tarnishing his image and will rather lie than publicly admit his mistakes. The author turns to the study of factors that allow a company to turn from simply good into exceptional. For this purpose, 11 companies were selected whose shares had greatly increased in price and remained expensive for at least 15 years. It was found that the key factor for success is the leader at the head of the company. He has an agile mindset, believes in the ability of his employees to grow, honestly admits his mistakes and miscalculations, and moves the company forward based on facts, not fantasies about his talent. Leaders with a frozen mind live in a world where they belong to the upper class and everyone else is the lower class they must constantly prove their superiority, 
and the company serves as a platform for this. Such geniuses do not need an effective team, since they can only shine in an environment of mediocrity. At critical moments of choice, leaders with a frozen mindset make decisions that make them look good at the expense of the long-term health of the company. They blame others for their mistakes, despise those below them, cover up their mistakes, crush critics, neglect the interests of the little man, and surround themselves with flatterers and sycophants. As a rule, the most competent employees become victims of such bosses, since they pose the greatest threat to a boss with a frozen mentality. In the world of leaders with an agile mindset, things are different. These leaders believe in human potential, the ability to grow, and the effectiveness of teamwork. As an example, Dweck talks about the management style of Jack Welch, the legendary CEO of General Electric. When Welch took over the company in 1980, it was worth $14 billion. 20 years later, its value was estimated at $490 billion. Welch always listened to the opinions of workers. He respected them, raised them, and learned from them. He did not consider himself a superhero and recognized that the company's achievements were the result of collective efforts. Welch was convinced that true self-confidence did not mean a title, an expensive suit or a prestigious car, but an openness to change, receptivity, to new ideas, and a willingness to improve. He was attracted by the opportunity for company growth, not by his own importance. He did away with stars and rewarded team performance rather than individual merit. Groupthink Groupthink occurs when everyone in a group begins to think the same way. No one disagrees, no one criticizes. Groupthink comes from a frozen way of thinking as a result of limitless faith in the genius of the leader. Groupthink can lead to disastrous consequences, such as the failed American invasion of the Bay of Pigs to overthrow Fidel Castro. President Kennedy's faith in success was so great that not a single advisor spoke out against the ill-conceived operation. Churchill, protecting himself from the false sense of security that arises from groupthink, created a special department that was supposed to report all the most unpleasant news to him. Groupthink also occurs in a situation where a boss with a frozen way of thinking punishes dissenters and possible criticism remains unexpressed. For example, the president of Chrysler did not tolerate critical thinking employees. Therefore, no one objected to him when he said that a car with a more rounded shape looked like a flying potato, and Chrysler with its square cars was losing more and more market share. Corporate Training Thousands of hours and millions of dollars are spent training managers to become effective mentors to their employees. The success of training depends on the mindset of managers and leaders. Managers with a frozen mindset do not believe in the possibility of personal growth and are looking for already formed talent. Why bother mentoring if the employee can't change anyway? And why care about what employees think about themselves if I don't change either? Managers with an agile mindset believe that ability is only the starting point and invest time and energy in training their employees and in their own development. They notice positive changes in the work of their colleagues and welcome criticism. Personal Relationships In every person's personal life, there are disappointments and broken hearts. However, some are left with scars for life, while others quickly heal and move on. It turns out that people with a frozen mindset when rejected in a loving relationship, are convinced that they have been sentenced for life. They are not attractive and not worthy of love. They feel insulted and dream of revenge. A person with a moving way of thinking, having experienced a breakup in a love relationship, tries to figure it out and understand what went wrong, forgive and forget. Thanks to a mobile mindset, such a person does not feel pinned down for life, but on the contrary, tries to learn something new about himself 
and about personal relationships in order to use this knowledge in the future. People with a frozen way of thinking believe in magical love, like the one that happened to Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. Couples with an agile mindset do not expect miracles, but know that a lasting relationship is the result of joint efforts and overcoming differences. The most destructive factor for relationships is the idea that because we have to work on the relationship, there is something seriously wrong with it. Additionally, people with a frozen mindset believe that problems in their relationships are the result of character flaws. When talking about conflicts in relationships, they tend to blame the conflict on their partner's character flaws. At the same time, they become angry and disgusted with their partner. As soon as a person with a frozen mentality begins to see the shortcomings of his partner, he becomes disillusioned with the relationship itself. People with a mobile way of thinking see all the flaws of their partners, recognize that each of them is not perfect, and continue to build relationships on this basis. Bullies and their victims. Rejection occurs not only in love relationships, but also in school life, there are teenagers who are laughed at and bullied. Their life turns into a daily nightmare, which leads to depression and bouts of rage. Bullying the weak is a reflection of evaluative actions. Stronger teenagers assign ratings to weaker ones, considering them less worthy individuals. At the same time, bullies and hooligans, by humiliating the weak, receive a charge of their own self-esteem and increase their social status. Others may view them as cool, influential, or funny. Others may be afraid of them. In any case, they are distinguished by a frozen way of thinking, which instills in them the belief that people are divided into superior and inferior. Victims of bullying who have a predominant frozen mentality may deep down accept that they are inferior, and this leads either to depression and suicide, or to revenge in the form of violent acts against their tormentors. Parents and Children Every word a parent says carries a message about how children should think about themselves. A T can be aimed at developing a frozen mindset and communicate. You have certain permanent properties, and I evaluate them or it could be a message that promotes an agile mindset. You are a developing person, and I will help you develop. If you praise a child and tell him, you learned everything so quickly, you are so capable, or look at his drawing this is the future Picasso. Then the child actually hears something completely different. If I don't learn something quickly, then I don't have the ability, or I'd better not take on more difficult drawings, otherwise they will see that I am not Picasso. Parents think that praising their children's intelligence and talent will forever instill in them a sense of self-confidence. According to the author's theory, everything is just the opposite. Dweck believes that parental praise for a child's intelligence or abilities harms the child's motivation and future performance. Such praise leads children to begin to doubt their abilities as soon as they encounter the first difficulties. The best thing parents can do for children is to teach them to love solving complex problems, explaining their own mistakes, enjoying work, looking for new solutions and learning throughout their lives. Does this mean that we cannot enthusiastically praise our children when they deserve it? not at all. We just need to show them that we value not their intelligence or talent, but their efforts, studies, perseverance, planning, which led to a high result. Our praise should convey the message that skills and achievements do not come from innate talent, but from diligent, consistent, and persistent learning. Sometimes the problem is not that the child is trying to little, but that he is trying too hard, but in the wrong direction. Such children work hard, but they do it not out of love for science, but for the sake of high grades, awards, admission to prestigious schools, and ultimately, to prove their worth to their parents. 
Parents in this situation must learn to separate their ambitions and desires from the child's needs and create conditions so that the child can enjoy learning what is truly interesting to him. When a child encounters failure, the parent's first reaction is to protect and support their child's self-esteem by finding a self-esteem-friendly explanation for the failure. However, this approach, according to Dweck, while helping to cope with the child's immediate disappointment, harms him in the long run. Children need frank and constructive criticism. Dweck believes that if a child does not explain that his failure is due to a lack of effort, then over time he will begin to negatively perceive any criticism, advice, or mentoring, believing that it undermines his dignity. Teachers and Students Great teachers believe in developing talent and intelligence and are fascinated by the learning process. Teachers with a frozen mindset create an environment in which labeling thrives. Only having had time to get acquainted with the performance of their students, they already know who is capable and who is foolish. Such teachers will not waste time on fools considering them hopeless. Talented teachers with an agile mindset show interest and care for each student. They believe in their learning ability and help them reach their full potential. Moreover, teachers who devote many hours of their time to the worst of their students are not saints at all. They simply love to learn, and teaching others is a wonderful way to learn new things about people, their subject, themselves, and life. Subtleties of a mobile way of thinking an agile mindset is the belief that people can develop their abilities, and it's not just about the amount of effort. It is important to understand that developing abilities is a process that includes not only hard work, but also finding a variety of ways to solve a problem and seeking outside help. We must also remember that hard work is not an end in itself. It should lead to the desired result achievement, progress, learning and children must understand the connection between the process and the result that it was participation in the process that led to new knowledge. An agile way of thinking is not the same as the slogan, you can do anything. You need to set realistic goals for students and help them acquire the skills and resources needed to achieve them. How to develop a mobile way of thinking. Dweck admits that she divided all people into those with a moving mentality and those with a frozen one, for the sake of simplicity of presentation. In fact, every person has both ways of thinking, one of which manifests itself to a greater extent, depending on the specific situation. Consciously or subconsciously, our mind is constantly observing what is happening and interpreting events. Sometimes there is a breakdown in the interpretation process, and then we react to what is happening with an exaggerated sense of anger, anxiety, or a sense of entitlement. The way of thinking gives direction to the process of interpretation. In a frozen mindset, the internal monologue is focused on evaluation. This means I'm a loser, or this means I'm better than them, or this means my partner is selfish. People with a moving way of thinking also constantly observe what is happening and interpret events, but they are more inclined to constructive actions. What lesson can I learn from this situation? Or how can I improve? Or how can I help my partner do this better? Cognitive psychotherapy teaches a person to control his judgments and make them more reasonable and balanced. However, it will not transform a frozen way of thinking into a moving one. To do this, Dweck suggests attending special seminars where participants are explained that our brain, like a muscle, grows and becomes stronger the more often it is used. That every person can learn that one must be patient and work hard. That we need to stop being afraid of difficulties, criticism and failures. It is important not only to set yourself up for a mobile way of thinking, but also to develop a specific plan of action and stick to it. To master an agile mindset on your own, Dweck recommends a few simple steps. 
First, you need to admit to yourself that you have a frozen way of thinking. Secondly, you need to learn to recognize situations that stimulate the manifestation of your frozen way of thinking. Then you need to give your frozen mindset a name and treat it as your other self. Dialogue with it. Explain to it the essence of the fluid mindset and observe how it makes you think, feel, and act in complex ways. Situations. Many people with a predominant frozen way of thinking are sure that it is not they, but the world around them that needs to change. They feel entitled to a better job, a better home, a better spouse. The world must recognize their excellent qualities and appreciate them. However, when promoting at work, they are passed over. Their frozen mindset suggests that this is happening because the boss sees their talents as a threat to himself. If they tune into a mobile way of thinking, they will begin to think about how to become more effective at work, how to learn more about the industry where they work, how to build relationships in a team and help their colleagues develop. As a person develops a mobile mindset, he will stop seeing his colleagues as rivals and will find that people help and support him. Gradually, he will learn to constantly be in a state of mobile thinking regardless of the complexity of the situation. Dweck emphasizes that the transition from a frozen way of thinking to a moving one is a complex and lengthy process. This is not about mastering a few tricks, but about acquiring a new vision of the world. This is a transition from the principle of judge and you will be judged to the principle of learn and help to learn. It is a constant commitment to growth and development that requires time, effort, and support. Conclusion The book, Way of Thinking, is unlikely to leave the reader with a feeling of a complete discovery or a breakthrough into new areas of knowledge. However, the concepts introduced by the author about two opposing types of thinking, frozen and moving, turn out to be extremely useful in practical life. They allow the reader firstly to recognize in himself and those around him the manifestation of a particular way of thinking. Secondly, to reevaluate the negative consequences of a frozen way of thinking. And most importantly, to learn to respond to various life situations using a moving way of thinking. Way of thinking. The author convincingly demonstrated that only people with a mobile way of thinking achieve success in sports, become talented teachers, and outstanding leaders. Conversely, a person with a frozen way of thinking tends to face problems at work and in his personal life. Of particular value are Dweck's advice regarding cultivating a mobile mindset in children, in particular recommendations on how parents can correctly respond to the successes and failures of their beloved offspring. If thanks to Dweck's book, the reader is able to detect in himself the signs of a frozen way of thinking and finds the strength and desire to cultivate a moving way of thinking, then the goal of the book will be achieved. So my friend, we see that our mentality plays a crucial role in our success and our potential for development. Dr. Dweck's research shows that our attitude toward effort, failure, and ourselves matters enormously. By developing a flexible growth mentality, we can overcome obstacles, strive for self-improvement, and reach new heights. It is important to remember that our potential is not static, and we can always learn, grow, and develop. Let's be inspired by the idea that our minds and our behavior can change if we take a positive and flexible approach to life. Remember that every failure is an opportunity for learning and growth. Let's strive to become the best version of ourselves every day. With a growth mentality, we can gain confidence, achieve our goals and reach our true potential. Bye.